Good evening and welcome to this midnight reflection on Christmas Eve. My name is Reverend Vicky and I'm the priest at St James's and it's so sad that we're not able to gather together as we usually do on Christmas Eve and to welcome the special Christmas day in. But my prayer is that you'll find comfort in the selection of carols and reflections and readings and prayers that I've put together. And may you know that even though we can't physically gather together as the body of Christ, we are united by God's Holy Spirit, drawing us together to worship him. We light this candle as one of celebration. Not because every evil has yet been conquered or every trial overcome, but because the mark of God's coming is indelibly stamped in the history and destiny of this world. There is a kingdom that will prevail long after this world's struggles have subsided. A kingdom whose doorway has been flung open and the light of Christ points us to its threshold. We kindle a flame to show our desire that this kingdom's dawn should be made known, to draw the eyes of those who long for a better world to the place where every such hope can be fulfilled. We join with those who declare the certainty of God's promise, revealed in newborn child and servant king. And so we seek the ways of this kingdom, confident that its sovereign will one day come again.
The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counsellor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and for ever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The world waits for a miracle The heart longs for a little bit of hope Oh come, oh come, amen child prays for peace on earth and she's calling out from a sea of hurt oh come oh come emmanuel and can you hear the angels sing
During those days, the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus ordered that the first census be taken throughout his empire. Quirinius was the governor of Syria at that time. Everyone had to travel to his or her hometown to complete the mandatory census. So Joseph and his fiancée Mary left Nazareth, a village in Galilee, and journeyed to their hometown in Judea, to the village of Bethlehem, King David's ancient home. They were required to register there, since they were both direct descendants of David. Mary was pregnant and nearly ready to give birth. When they arrived in Bethlehem, Mary went into labour, and there she gave birth to her firstborn son. After wrapping the newborn baby in strips of cloth, they laid him in a feeding trough, since there was no available space in any upper room in the village.
That night, in a field near Bethlehem, there were shepherds watching over their flocks. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared in radiant splendour before them, lighting up the field with a blazing glory of God, and the shepherds were terrified. But the angel reassured them, saying, Don't be afraid, for I have come to bring you good news, the most joyous news the world has ever heard. And it is for everyone, everywhere. For today in Bethlehem, a rescuer was born for you. He is the Lord Yahweh, the Messiah. You will recognise him by this miracle sign. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a feeding trough. Then, all at once, a vast number of glorious angels appeared, the very armies of heaven, and they all praised God, singing, Glory to God in the highest realms of heaven, for there is peace and a good hope given to the sons of men. When the choir of angels disappeared back to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go, let's hurry and find this word that is born in Bethlehem and see for ourselves what the Lord has revealed to us. So they ran into the village and found their way to Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in a feeding trough. Upon seeing this miraculous sign, the shepherds recounted what had just happened. Everyone who heard the shepherd's story was astonished by what they were told. But Mary treasured all these things in her heart and often pondered what they meant. The shepherds returned to their flock, ecstatic over what had happened. They praised God and glorified him for all they had heard and seen for themselves, just like the angel had said.
Stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill. May we pray. Holy Jesus, by being born one of us and lying humbly in a manger, you show how much God loves the world. May the light of your love always shine in our hearts. May you draw us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Lord Jesus, you were born in a stable but worshipped by the angels. 
May you be with all who are lonely and with all who are feeling distant from celebrations this year. May you be for us a living hope that lightens our hearts. Jesus, as you healed the sick, may you please bring healing to those in our families and those on our hearts who are sick in body, mind or spirit today. Jesus, Saviour, Son of Mary, you know us and love us. You share our lives and hear our prayer. Glory to you for ever. May God, who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light, bless us and fill us with peace. Amen. So may the joy of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, the worship of the wise men and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>